Hey, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are gonna be changing out this bumper on our 2003 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. This uh, bumper has something going on. Uh, I don't know if the video shows it, but it's definitely not aligned. It's like it's leaning uh, downhill. Uh, this truck should have fog lights. I have the button. I have a wiring harness that is zip tied up and we have no holes. So I know that this isn't the original bumper for the truck. So in today's video, we are going to be putting on a wrench land that I purchased off of Amazon. And let's go look at that now. Here is our wrench land that I ordered off of Amazon. I think it was at their shipping, handling, and everything, and taxes like $1,700. I went with the, uh, the Amazon route because through JEGS, it was a $200 freight fee, where uh, with Amazon Prime, I got it shipped for free. There was a lot of comments about these coming in in bad condition uh, on, on Amazon. This thing came great. Uh, I wound up having to get it shipped to a location where I could use a forklift. So that worked out and then I unboxed it and then loaded it in, into my enclosed trailer. It came, looks perfect. Uh, you can see this material, this packing material is all wrapped on. It was uh, banded onto a pallet and I'm very happy. So it is very heavy. I went with the bull nose or bulldog version. I didn't want the the version that covers up the headlights with the big uh, guards. I just wanted something that gave me a little bit of uh, protection from like deers. And the biggest reason is I needed something to clear the wheels and tires on the truck. So let's go back to the truck and I'll show you that. So on this truck, it has a rough country six inch lift. And part of that uh, lift, is designed to run these tires, which are 35, 12 and a half by 20s. This rim looks like, I, I don't know, a 10 inch rim, maybe even larger. It is very wide. And you can see that the previous to the previous owner had cut this out for another wheel and uh, rim tire combination that required clearancing. When they did that, they removed some bracketry that we, uh, a friend of mine, and I used to at least make this bumper somewhat level. It was even worse uh, before, and that's where it just turned into, I, I just want this whole bumper gone. There's too much uh, going on, I don't understand. So I did not want to order a 2500, because what, from what I understand, it would have even dropped the bumper even lower and I don't know if this uh, package, this wheel tire well, uh, rim combo would, would clear as you can see how it sticks out when you turn. So I didn't want to do this twice. Went ahead and went with the wrench land because I know it'll clear. It should come out to about right here, which is where we're at now. This is what I hope and uh, should be good to go. So that's a little bit of a background of why, how we got here. And now I need to get out of the rain. I'm gonna pull and uh, nose this into the garage and uh, start preparing to remove this bumper. So you've seen how uh, kind of complicated that was. It is definitely heavy, but here's another overview of it. We will definitely be using the engine hoist to be lifting it, and hopefully that works without uh, damaging it too bad and staying level. It does have a hitch on the front, which I do like. In that case, uh, we need to hook up some type of um, snatch block or I do have a setup to put a winch that uh, is made to go into a hitch. So that is an option. 
But yeah, that's it. That's enough talking. Let's clean up the trash and then now I can get the truck nosed in. So we're in here. That worked out pretty good. You can see how close we are to the roof or the, the top of the garage. We ain't gonna better open our hood all the way, but good enough. So something else I haven't shown y'all. This back here. We got headlights. So I haven't even opened them yet, but we have some headlights to put on. And then that's some more bracketry to the wrench hand and hardware. So I figured if we're gonna do a bumper, might as well put on some clean headlights. So that'd be part of the process too. And actually I might just go ahead and remove those uh, just in case that gives us any access to anything. So I am gonna go ahead and remove these headlights. Fairly simple, as you've seen, we just Flip these up, these pins. That's really the only thing that holds it in with hardware and everything else is like through like some clips that are kind of slotted, I guess you can say. I'm doing this one handed. You can see this part of the headlight tucks behind there. And then you can see there's your tabs. So you just lift those up. And of course we got to take our bubs out, which I'm going to use two hands to do. I'm probably going to put on gloves. And then next, I think the, does the bottom one just pop out? I, can't, I took them out. I can't remember how I did it. I think there's a tab right there. So let me uh, off camera take these out so I don't damage anything. And we're going to do the other side and just get these out of the way. Really easy with two hands and some gloves. As I thought on the bottom one, you just remove that tab or you push that tab in and it pops out this way and then it just slides out. I got them on the ground. I left the top bubs in uh, just so I don't get any of those mixed up between high and low. Same thing for over there. So that's out of the way. It's just one less thing to have to worry about. So we had these homemade straps and everything that we were doing just to try to remedy this from uh, being so canted down. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those and that should really uh let this thing sag because there was a lot of pressure to even get this bumper to be this uh straight or level now after that i'm going to get under the car and find our next bolts and go from there So you can see what we just took out, our homemade brackets. Um, of course, this is a modification we made. You'll have something similar though, if you're doing this on your vehicle, it'd just be like a, a tube with some welded ends like that. Same thing, it's just three bolts. This is how the truck, uh, when I got it, was driving around with that much of a slope to it. Looked horrible, right? So let's look at the other side. But it just, this, the truck already being jacked up, this side ain't nearly as bad. Being this jacked up and having a bumper that looked like it was falling off just made it look even, uh, like I almost had like that Carolina squat look because it's downhill, which, and it's not, it's pretty level. All right, so we got those out of the way. Let's go to this bumper. Uh, I am assuming... Next, I need to find the bolts that go like here, here, and then maybe if they connect somewhere like that. So I'm gonna probably get something that I put on the ground so I don't get as nasty and sit on or lay on or however this is about to work and start knocking out the next set of bolts. So after getting under the truck, you can see the socket here and it's all janky. I, I really 
don't have a whole lot of confidence of making a video on how to remove a bumper because there's some modifications on this thing. Now, definitely part of this video of how to install this one will be accurate, but how to remove one, not so much. So it looks like this is a 19 here and they got some spacer things going on. I don't know. And then this one looks like this bracket's all bent. So I'm gonna take these bolts out and then go to the next steps. So if something looks weird and then, but it does look like if I take those out, combined with those side brackets that should be in there that we just took off that uh, janky stuff that uh, this actually might just come out. Might be it. So we'll have to see. This is something that was on there, it looked like some type of pipe thread uh, fitting. That bolt is bent, although I don't see any, something's been cut off there, so that scares me. First, let me uh, retract my dumbness. I've been calling this a wrench land, it's a wrench hand. Every time I said it, it's just like, man, that doesn't sound right. But no, it is a ranch hand, and I'm sure I'll put that in uh, text on the video to correct myself every time I said it wrong. We have our engine hoist cherry picker already hooked up to it with some ratchet straps. I took all of our hardware or bracketry out of the truck. This is for the tow hooks. It says uh, on the instructions it's easier to go ahead and bolt all this on. So I had to re-review that. I read it yesterday. This is for your, your fog lights. So same thing, I'm going to try to uh, put those on ahead of time. I'll read the instructions it came with. If I understand, this is just your hardware kit that comes with the wrench hand. So now I'm going to get this lifted up. So I ain't having to, I'm assuming some of these brackets are, might be mounted to the bumper itself. I'm not sure, but either way, I can go and have this in place and figure out how I'm about to rig this because I might have to put like another ratchet strap to keep it level. I don't know, I'm trying to do everything I can to keep from having something interfere or hit the bumper or whatever the existing uh, pieces of the truck. So, okay, I'm gonna set y'all up, y'all can watch, and let's get this lifted in the air. So we got it in the air. Let me show you all how I did the rigging. Cause this worked out pretty good. These are some Harbor Freight straps. I wrapped it on the bottom cause I needed my hooks to stay as low as possible. Cause I wanted to be able to ratchet um, these straps as close as the hook as I could. Because as you can see, we're starting to get where I'm worried about hitting the garage um, door. So that worked out pretty good, wrapping it and then looping it over. I did it on each side. So I have two uh, for not, what do you want to call it? Not, I don't want to break a strap because this thing is heavy, right? So I got two of them. So I feel good about that. And then it kind of balances it because I got them separated to help give me some side to side uh, balance. And then it, as you can see, it's just a little bit lean back, which might work as we go to the front of the truck we'll have to see just looking at the truck i have a black emblem i might throw on while this is all off i don't know y'all see in there i think it's i'm gonna do it i think it's just some nuts i think i can take that off and throw that black emblem on while it's out so i might do that too i think that look pretty sharp so here is the emblem this was found in the toolbox in the back got some scuffing on it and one part of me says to paint it, but the other part of me says, I mean, the truck ain't pretty either. So I'm gonna throw it on like it is. And if I regret it later, we'll take it back off. But it's just threads on. It looks like uh, me putting a socket on the back. It's just two 10 millimeter. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, zip those off and let's put this on. What y'all think? I think uh, it's fitting. The perfectionist in me wants it to be clean. But the guy who realized the rest of the truck isn't clean 
doesn't want it. I think uh, it looks worn. If anything, I would like to scuff up the rest of it, but uh, let me step back so y'all can see it. I'm thinking, no, I was gonna say I was gonna go ahead and put the rest of the headlights in, but I'm not, cause I would be very upset if I accidentally like rub this corner into that lower one there. I'm really curious if this is gonna stay on too. It's something that we noticed when we was working on this truck that this, this thing, this plastic was all flippity floppity. So I'm curious. Okay, a few hours later, I think I have the passenger side fog light figured out. Um, you can see it's kind of not what I thought it would be. That's why I spent so much time figuring it out. Uh, but I think I have an idea of it's just meant to not be a blank hole, I guess you can say. So on the driver's side, I'll show you what you need to do. So I got some eBay special fog lights since this one did not come with them and some eBay special hooks. And uh, since these, this truck didn't come with those either, but let's, uh, let's get through the bracket system. So for the passenger side, let me show you all the instructions. It's kind of confusing. So I have the top one because it is a Silverado. If you had a GMC, you got the round fog light there. So you see this top bracket like it is there. It mounts like this. You have your bolt and nuts that go through. And then you have uh, your bracket comes up like the, the Z, I guess it is, or the, yeah, Z like that. And then you got to find some hardware and some nuts if you don't have your fog lights. Uh, but if you do, then you just uh, use um, the hardware that came with the fog lights. I got a nut plate kit and stuff like that that worked pretty good for the hardware. And then you mount the fog light into the bracket bucket like this. That's how the end result is going to be. Your adjustment screws right here, which we're going to play around with. So now do you see what one looks like assembled. Let's break this one down because it was pretty confusing. <laughs> Fog light. The first thing I had to do was on this adjustment screw. Well, uh, let me take that back. You need this set up here. I'll remove this light bulb so it won't damage it. You need this set up here where uh, this bulb is in the middle because we got to take the pivot point on each side out and what I was messing around with it earlier and I, I try not to crack it and you just gently take it out like that it'll pop or kind of move like that and you see if you have it all uh, already messed up on your alignment taking this out it'll get caught up on the edges so you don't want that try not to do it all right, see like that? And then it's it's hovering, or what you wanna say. And then we're gonna take and loosen up our adjustment screw here and take it all the way out. So I'll do that off camera. Separated like that. The nut uh, plastic, or just the adjustment screw and nut will stay in there. And what you're gonna do is there's two tabs on each side. And what I learned is if the Allen head that is inside is off to one side or not, it'll make it kind of hard. Like if you move it this way, it won't go in. But if we shift it that way, I'll do it like that. And it comes out. Now, the pain in the butt part. Let me find the bracket for this. That is going to go into this slot. So... This needs to go in here, and then I had to put this on a table and use a rubber mallet to get this to seat. I had to make sure that this was flat, flat on that square piece, or it didn't just give it enough to clip here. Because you don't, you when you make your adjustment, you don't want this to come out because your fog light will lose this adjustment after you set it. So one thing I did notice is as I was hitting that. I bent my bracket. So on the other one, I'm going to, have to make sure the bracket 
is straight because that's going to mess up our alignment. I must fail when we do that. All right. So we have that adjusted out. So let's pull out our instructions. So I have the, what is it, the bull, let's see, our bull nose one. If you look here, it says these holes will be used to mount the fog lights with the bull nose. So uh, let's see if it's on this one here. On both of them for GMC and Sierra, that's there. So for that, that means we have to use these holes and not these. So we're going to take our E-clips here and we're going to put those in place and then we're going to take our hardware and bolt it up here. So we have that in place and what I kind of did was use the height to kind of line up to the top here and then this has a bunch of adjustment in it. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go to the front. Let's see. Yeah, I'm pretty happy, I think, with that. Let's see if we can compare the two. Yeah, look, blah. So now it's a 19 millimeter. I'm going to use a 19 millimeter and adjustable and knock this in, and then we'll do our tow hooks. I'll show you how the tow hooks hook up. So you use the OEM bolt. So if you do have to buy shackles, you're going to, have to need the OEM bolt on the inside. The other side that's right here, kit comes with the bolt. Let's get under the, the truck. As you can see, see this is the inside. You have to use the OEM bolt here. Hopefully y'all can see that. And come around the other side, and you can see this is the bolt supply by Ranch Hand. This has been horrible. I mean, got a mess over there. I'm losing my mind. I really need to stop, but I need the Trans Am to come back inside. So I have to finish this tonight. The issue is these two top bolts and I'm not going to blame it on ranch hand. I'm going to blame it on, uh, maybe this thing was in a front end accident and this might be like a quarter This frame horn is maybe like a quarter inch off. But as you can see, with a jack which is made really should have like a porter power and then a ratchet strap holding it in i got it to work um i did take the grill off one time the bumper assembly opened up this hole probably like an eighth of an inch and then I, this one went in fine and then this one was the issue i don't know highly recommend two people um because this has been really exhausting by myself especially with the alignment issues but as you can see, there is a wheel, there's a way between ratchet straps and jacks. If I would have had my big ratchet straps, maybe I could have did something different with wrapping ratchet straps around the horns or the uh, the frame. I don't know. But I want to show you with a bumper and a two by four and then a ratchet strap, I got it to work. So I'm going to take all this apart. I got the two bolts at the top end. Now I'm going to start putting in the other bolts that go in like here and stuff like that. Now that I'm using a ratchet strap, I highly recommend one uh, just instead of fighting this thing. For the ones that go through the frame, the way I'm doing it, use that, use the ratchet strap to pull it back. I'm taking a magnet, pretty strong magnet, hooking it up to my uh, washer to my magnet, laying it down on the bolt. I have it on there. And then if I can find our lock nut, this is not the lock nut, this is. Same thing, attaching the lock nut to it, kind of like that. Then we're gonna fish it in there, and then we'll thread it into the lock nut. is mounted all we gotta do is get some tow hooks and the bumper be complete so let's dig out our headlights probably put on some fresh gloves 
and see what the finishing, uh, how it's gonna look when it's all finished. Yeah, it's looking pretty sick. Um, one of the things I don't like is I got incandescence up top, although it's kind of hard to see on camera. It looks pretty white, but it's actually pretty yellow. The reason why I did that is I can't stand LEDs and you add LEDs to a jacked up truck. I hate you. Um, I'm used to driving a little vehicle as a commuter because they get the best gas and I can't stand oncoming traffic. I, yeah, pet peeve of mine, I ain't gonna go on a rant. So I run incandescence. It might not look the best, but it is what it is. Uh, my daytime running lights though are LEDs. They're daytime running lights. Not really worried about blinding people with those. Uh, and I don't know how good these style LEDs really are when they're meant for daytime running lights. But as you can see, it looks sick. Now, if we could get this one to light up, I think really all we have to do is splice it into the bottom and that will be it. So let me read the instructions, see if that's what they recommend. Oh, let's test our fog lights. There we go, oh, that looks sick. And then it, to me, it matches when I have incandescence at the bottom and incandescence at the top. Um, so that, that works, that works. Ooh, I might get new lenses for the bottom. I, at first I wanted the ones that were um, haze, like the eBay used ones, but I didn't think about having brand new lenses at the top. So might have to order some off Amazon. We'll see. Well, here's the lights. There's the fog lights on. Definitely need to adjust fog lights. This one's sitting high, blinding me. I need to bring them down. It's raining. I don't know if I want to do it right now, but it's sick. This is sick, 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 sick. And you know what? I don't even know if I can adjust them, but I got it so close here. If I need to bring it down, it'll be something for tomorrow. I gotta clean up. And, uh, yeah, we got a lot to do. Here it is. All finished up with brand new fog lights off of Amazon. We ordered the right tow hooks, the 2500. I think I showed the headlight already, but here they are. I have the top um led i guess strip wired in to the side marker which is the way this bottom one was wired up not going in depth on that this video is more about the bumper but yeah really happy with it the fog lights pretty simplistic amazon sells you the whole bucket and everything but the only thing you need is the adjuster the light itself and some uh, light bulbs. And then we got everything adjusted. And that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this video off and try to get this posted so y'all can watch it. And hopefully this helps somebody. On to the next one.